Right now, the Challenger is ready for another challenge in space, and Morton Dean is at the Kennedy Space Center with our live report. Good morning, Mort. Good morning, Bill, and good morning, Meredith. In just about two minutes, the Challenger will rise like a flaming sun toward an orbit 218 Martin, miles Martin, above the Earth. Earth. And with me here at the Kennedy Space Center is astronaut Bill Fisher. Bill, good morning again to you. Morning, Mort. We're looking at that beanie cap being removed from the top of that orange external tank, the huge fuel tank, Bill. That's right. The uh, white room came away a few minutes ago, and that's the last thing to go, uh, actually the last thing that was connecting the orbiter to the pad other than its support structure down below. So it's uh, free now and ready to go. A minute and 30 seconds before launch, some folks up the East Coast might get a view of this launch, or at least a view of a tiny speck of light as it streaks toward an orbit in space. You're right. I think it'll be more than a tiny speck of light, uh, especially with this early morning or uh, pre-dawn kind of launch. I think folks up uh, as far as North Carolina ought to get a good shot at it. There's a crowd on board, seven, a crew of seven, the largest ever. It's the largest crew ever to go into space, Coming either uh, American or Russian space program. Mark, in fact, that number seconds. equals the Sounds entire like number of the original the astronaut the corps. Lift-off water will be released at T-minus 16 seconds. The weather is good. The Hydrogen dawn is breaking in a spectacular fashion here. The Chamber of Commerce of the state of Florida will be very pleased with what's going on so far this morning. We are 40 seconds away from launch. And your analogy of the uh, rising like a sun is a good one because the temperature of the solid rocket boosters as they ignite is very close to that of the surface of the sun. So it, uh, it's as bright as the sun and uh, with good reason. 27 seconds. 25 seconds now. now running on the, uh, orbiter Five computer. men, we two women on board. We are live from the Kennedy Space seconds. Center. Standing by now for the terminal count. An eight-day flight. 15. Let's listen in. T-minus 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Go for main engine start. 7, 6. We have main engine start. 5, 3, 2, 1. Zero. Zero. We have SRB ignition and the history's largest oh, astronaut. Look at is that. On that is absolutely spectacular. Houston controlling now. All main engines running at 100 percent. And the shock wave rolls across the Kennedy Space Center. Roll program initiated. 120 degree roll. Maneuver. Well, I've seen put the ship all of them, and this is the most beautiful That is gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, throw a cloud cover. Throttling down to 92%. Main engine's running smoothly. Throttling down now to 65%. A crew of seven on board. They are Challenge scheduled to return to here to at the Thank Kennedy you, Space uh, Center next Saturday at around noon. Pressure on the ship. Well, everything looks great up there. I'm not so sure about this building, but uh, <laughs> it does shake well, a lot. It really does. We are uh, about three miles from the launch pad. It's all uh, running smoothly. And the building does shake. A tongue of flame still visible to the naked eye from the Space Center. And what you're seeing Watch on your television screen is a shot taken from an aircraft. Go at throttle up. All main engines back at 100% of thrust. Uh, velocity okay, they're past the period of maximum dynamic pressure now, and the engines have been re-throttled back to full power. One of the big events on this flight is a spacewalk, Bill, the first spacewalk by an American woman, Catherine Sullivan. That's correct, and this spacewalk is especially important because it uh, is going to demonstrate uh, to us and I think to the community at large that we can not only launch satellites as we've done in previous shuttle missions, but indeed refuel them. She will be practicing the technique of refueling an orbiting spacecraft. That's correct something that will be done on future missions. Just a few seconds away from the separation of those big cigar-shaped solid rocket boosters. We should be able to see that. That call precursor to SRB separation, which should come momentarily. There they go. And now we'll separate. Well, that looks just like it ought to look. That looks great. Those are reusable canisters. All three engines. They fall back. That's fall right. Goes well and the, the, NASA, the NASA Navy picks them up and uh, brings them in, and, and we'll use them again. First stage performance nominal. Roger, nominal first stage. Oh, that's that good call news. advising the crew that the uh, performance of the solid boosters was as predicted, and subsequent calls should be on time. Uh, main engine performance is still nominal. Uh, velocity 5,400 feet per second, altitude 
36 nautical miles, distance to range 49 nautical miles. Challenger now climbing at a rate of uh, 4,700 feet per second. They are looking for an orbit 218 miles above the Earth and will achieve a speed of something over 17,000 miles an hour. Uh, Commander Bob Crippen in charge. This is his fourth flight. That's right. Uh, I guess Bob uh, has acquired the title of the grizzled veteran astronaut by now. He's uh, the most flown shuttle astronaut we have. Not quite as grizzled as John Young. And well, John has six flights, totality. but uh, Bob certainly is our most flown, uh, flown shuttle astronaut. Bill, uh, from everything we've seen and heard so far, uh, perfect launch. Perfect. It's the uh, smoothest countdown we've seen. And thank you for your help, Mort Dean, along with astronaut Bill Fisher at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It makes us feel real good as well that we got it off right on time. Yeah, NASA is very concerned, not only with, by the way, getting it off on time, but they want to bring it back here on time on Saturday. We might also add that they did that one a bit under duress because this was the quickest turnaround. Discovery uh, coming back to Earth exactly one month ago today. We'll get a check of the replay, uh, replay the, uh, the launch one more time of Challenger. It was scheduled to lift off the pad at 7.03. It went off exactly on time, a beautiful sight against the dawn Florida sky. Three, two, one. Zero. We have SRB ignition and the history's largest astronaut crew is on its way. Houston controlling now. All main engines running at 100 percent. So Challenger and its crew aloft and uh, now well into its mission. To, uh, put the, uh, ship on its You're seeing our top story of the day the, played uh, out before you. Heads down. Let's take lift off. Five, three, two, one. This 13th shuttle mission is the first to carry two women into space. One of those women, Kathy Sullivan, will be the first American woman to walk in space. The Challenger is scheduled to return to Earth Saturday, October 13th. SRB ignition and the history's largest astronaut crew is on its way. The dawn really came up like thunder here at the Kennedy Space Center. There were two sunrises this morning, NASA's and the other one. With me here, uh, Bill Fisher, astronaut Bill Fisher, who viewed the launch, Bill, that, uh, to repeat that word, was indeed spectacular. It really was. I've never seen a launch look quite that, uh, quite that good. It was more spectacular than the sunrise that followed it. It really was. It's an eight-day flight, or it's planned as an eight-day flight, and is scheduled to be probably the most ambitious flight to date. I think it's the most ambitious scientific uh, venture that NASA has launched. Uh, we are going to deploy a satellite which uh, we hope will eventually enable us to predict weather years in advance. And on board, we'll be using Earth monitoring and Earth sensing equipment that will uh, look for ancient ruins, find faults where they're not seen, look at hidden ocean currents, uh, a whole host of experiments. And they'll also be trying to resolve some of the mysteries of that dreaded space adaptation syndrome once again. Bill Fisher, thank you. you Back to New York. I would think, too, Mort, that this might, must feel very good for NASA because after all those false starts in earlier space launches, this one went off apparently without a hitch. No question about it.